Coming to you from Hollywood, California, it's the premiere episode of The Josh McCuga Show. Tonight's guest from the Schmoes No Show, it's Mark Ellis. And now your host, the guy with some of the hairiest arms you'll ever see, Josh McCuga. Welcome, everybody, to the premiere episode of The Josh McCuga Show. You guys have been waiting two long weeks. After 136 episodes of Between the Sheets, we have graduated here to The Josh McCuga Show. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh McCuga. Follow our channel. Subscribe to it. Leave us comments. Tell much if you like the show. Tell us if you like it. If you didn't like it, you can tell us that, too. We'll probably look at the comments, maybe not give it a thumbs up, but I'll respond to it and, and, and you know, give you an honest response. If you don't feel, have any feelings at all, but you just want to share it, do it. Our Patreon campaign is the future of this show. You guys can support us, give us some monies. We will do fun things on the show, all thanks to you guys, the fans. My guest tonight, guys, on the premiere episode of The Josh McCuga Show, brings a, almost a tear to the eye. It really does, mostly because he's actually wearing pants this time. <laughs> You guys know him from the Schmoes No Show. You know him from Collider's Movie Talk. You know him from Collider Jedi Council. You know him as one of the funniest human beings on this entire planet. He tours the country, making people laugh. He makes me laugh all the time, and he really makes me laugh when Buffalo Wild Wings waitresses ignore us for upwards of 30 minutes. <laughs> he was the first guest on Between the Sheets. He's one of my best friends in this entire world. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Ellis. Cheers. Oh, boy, am I proud of you, buddy. Oh, my God. Have we not made a little step up here, Mark? We have we done made? some work, both on camera and off camera. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think it does sum up the fact that I'm not appearing on this show showing my balls. Like, that's it. <laughs> That was, Ballgate was a huge thing that it was permeated huge thing. Yeah. all 136 episodes. The show was called Between the Sheets, first of all. First of all. If I can defend myself for just a little bit. You call me, to, and out of the goodness of my heart, yeah. I roll up there. It's a hot Southern California day. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to wear some, some board shorts. Sure. And I'm going to, they're going to be really loose in the thigh area. In, my, in your defense, though, you usually <laughs> wear board shorts to most public appearances <laughs> and or shows. People see you from the top down, they're like a desk covers you, and then you're like, ah, I'm just, you know, just rocking my board shorts and my sleeveless Van Halen shirt. You know, in retrospect, and that's what I wear out. Like, yes. that's, that, that's, what I, that's what I choose to leave the house with. Truth. If you see me in the apartment, <laughs> yeah. it's like, well, because, I literally am like a UFC fighter in the cage. Yes. Like, I just kind of stroll yes. around with maybe shorts on at the most, yeah. sweating, bleeding. May 22nd, 2013. Uh, uh -huh. This is what Mark Ellis and I look like. <laughs> this is the old Between the Sheets logo. Yeah. There's Mark in a, a movie pass t shirt. A movie pass shirt. Uh, a whore. You have board shorts on, flip flops. I have a California t shirt, and a picture of my family, some random highlighters. Um, oh, wow. This, this. It's kind of hard. It's it's awesome. We just had songs in our heart back we then, did. you know. No money to spend. Nothing. No girlfriends to talk about. No, Nothing. you didn't even have a suit. Like, look at you. <laughs> You're literally just wearing now the have shirt a shirt of a state. Uh, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, oh, it's a state that I'm in. I'll yeah. wear the shirt. I'm wearing a movie. What the hell is movie? I it's think we were all thinking creatively and like, you know, I'm gonna make this talk show like casual. And yeah. they were like, you look like an idiot. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing shirts with collars. And I was like, ooh, collars. I can put vests on. And then vests led to tie, and ties led to suits, and suits led to pink suits. And then mm, it's like every time I hang out with you, it's like Breast Care Awareness Month. You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the NFL in October got a hold of you, and they just didn't let go. <laughs> But I gotta say, as nice as it looks here, like like this, yeah. like this, this, this is like a, I'm in like a real studio. Hey man, we, I'm not being paid to say that. I'm in a real studio right now. I never thought I'd say that about the Josh McCuga show. Hey, thanks, but man. this thing, and you did this. You're you're like you're like Tim Allen, except with actual skills. Yes, <laughs> you know? yeah. like you actually put this together. I'm, I got Tim the Toolman Taylor's uh, personality with Al Borland's. Technique. Yes. Yeah. The fact that you know Al's last name from Home yeah. Improvement. Yeah. Whoo. Yeah. Somebody had a JTT calendar, <laughs> I think. A lot back. of JTT, a lot of Brad. You, uh, you put all this together yourself. You're like Bob Vila without the Nazi propaganda. So, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
He's not a Nazi. I was going to say, he's Bob Vila a Nazi? I just, I just wanted to you heard it here first on the Josh McGoo Show. Bob Vila is a Nazi. We just totally retooled the show. It's all Merv Griffin in the, in the Kramer one. It's, it's just like... It's all now it's Nazi propaganda show. It's great. Um, I just wanted to see you go through your mind, but be like, is Bob Dylan Nazi? Do I have to Google that real quick? <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I mean, he probably is, but I don't know. You saw me calculating. Uh, now, I know a lot of the fans that are watching the show know exactly what you do. Yeah. But since yeah. we shot that episode of yeah. Between the Sheets, there's really been a nice comeuppance, not only of the Schmoes No Show, uh, what where you are right now, what what stand-up is going on, but also the fact that now we all kind of get to work together in an office space and not just in a random house in the valley or like <laughs> a studio that may or may not have been an office space that may or may not have had a doorman or just a random person that let us in the door every night. I mean, yeah, it's one thing for us to like get together on our own nickel and hang out. Yeah. It's a totally other thing for corporations to pay us large sums of money yes. to work together Wait, in a confined space. do they pay you space. large sums? Because I'm well, not getting it's, large it's, sums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it costs a pretty penny to yes. be able to to afford a leather jacket made out of Arby's roast beef, but <laughs> I did it. Because your previous black leather jacket was was brought to you by none other than the Josh McCuga Show. That's right. Uh, I bought it in Florence, and it no longer looked good on me because I don't consider myself a <laughs> 90s airline pilot, but uh, <laughs> Mark Ellis sure does. Yeah, I mean, when I put on this jacket, I just feel like going to the end of an aircraft carrier and throwing some dog tags out in the Indian Ocean. Uh, Mark, I will say, um, I love all your success, and I love sharing in your success. Oh, thank um, you. You and I together, dude. It's pretty exciting it over awesome. at Collider, doing schmo stuff, uh, doing stand-up together. It's a, it's a fun journey. It is. We're it is. on right now. We are. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, not only the first episode of Between the Sheets, but the first episode of The Josh McCuga Show. Uh, if I can't thank I mean, we have some really nice heart-to-hearts on the Comedy Store porch. Yeah. We have some nice heart-to-hearts <laughs> at Buffalo Wild Wings. It's more like liver to liver, but yeah. Yeah, liver to liver. Now, everybody knows that you, you are a schmo. You run the schmoes, sure. you review yeah. movies. Yes, we do. Okay. Now, tonight's game, it's called the Josh McCougar Masterclass of Acting. <laughs> What's going to happen here is <laughs> I'm going to direct you through some scenes. Okay? I feel like I'm about to get molested at camp. How this is going to work is uh, okay. I'm going to set the scene, and okay. you're going to act. Okay. okay. I now, can do we've, that. we've talked on the front porch a couple times at the Comedy Store about how we don't like acting acting per se nah, yeah. but we love movies and we love critiquing other actors big fans and we love wrecking other people when they suck back to one cut the gate um that's what actors that's what directors do I think. is it yeah i think I don't know. <laughs> did you murder joe pantaleona and <laughs> take his hat i did is that where he's been <laughs> it's, a, it's a joey pants's hat all right okay. okay you come home after a long day at work and you find your lover in bed with another man. And the other man's name is Chris Defer Reeve. Oh, God, I thought you were going to say Chin Harlow. <laughs> <laughs> At which point I probably walk in and be like, well, I, I can't blame you. Okay. You made the right decision, honey. And action. Honey, the meeting went great. I can't wait to... You're shocked, oh, you're shocked. Get my it. God. Christopher Reeve? <laughs> He's could sweet. I touch you? If I could just touch you, honey, we're through. If I could just touch you, can I get one I need, picture I need more with you? anger, I need more anger. Honey, I can't believe you wouldn't tell me you're banging Superman. I do a movie show. I could have had him as a guest on Schmoe. This some, is bullshit. Some tears? I, I can't believe. Real tears? That you would take the time out of your busy schedule of saving lives to come bang my girlfriend. I need you to look, look, up, look up at the sky and scream. Look up at the sky and scream. Yes, yeah, Superman lives! And cut. Mark Ellis, everybody. Let's hear it for him. That's it. It gets a lot out of you. I know. I know. I know. I know. Josh, I went to a place there. I did. You did. And that place was called Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next scene. Next scene. Okay. You have uh, become very, very good friends with a docile creature named Flipper. And you have to, he, he okay. it's, it's time, he's healed, you have to let him back into the ocean. Okay. He doesn't want to go. Oh, okay. You have to send him away. You have to send him away, Mark. This is Boy, we've all been there. Yeah, okay. okay. Now we're gonna roll, roll camera one. Well, buddy, uh, what a journey we went on. I <laughs> still remember the day I accidentally hit you with my jet ski and we didn't think your tail was gonna make it, but 
It did. You did. I had nothing to do with it. That was all you and your blowhole. Do you have a blowhole? I don't know. He's a mammal. He's got a blowhole. Thank you. You do have a blowhole. And yeah, we got crazy with it one night after some tequila, but. <laughs> Flipper. Stay in the scene. Stay in the scene. It's time for you to. <clears throat> I know you think of me as your family, as that, that fun uncle that became your daddy. But I'm not your dad, Flipper. Hell, not even your uncle. At best, I'm a second cousin that you may have taken a prom in Kentucky. <laughs> Flipper, it's time for you to go back to your real family. Find it in your heart. Find it down there. Just get it. No, I don't want to do it. But I can't be selfish right now, OK? <laughs> I can't be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good. That was good. Good pun. I can't be selfish right now, Flipper. You have to do it for you, but don't worry about it. Your old Uncle Mark. <laughs> Flipper's not leaving. He's not leaving. Okay, Flipper, you need to go home. Okay? You need to go home. I don't want to send you home. But you gotta go. Flipper! Somebody <laughs> say this to this way. And cut. Wow, oh, Mark oh, Ellis. Oh, Woo! Oh, 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 it's getting hot in here. <laughs> it, uh, oh, okay. Finally, finally. Am I hearing a dolphin <laughs> right now? Or is that is that all my process? God damn. Okay. Ooh. You know, most new people in LA pay six hundred dollars for training like this. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I'm getting it for free. For free. Hell, I'm they paying don't pay you. Me to be on I'm paying free. you in Brita water there and some Magic Hat <laughs> beer. Uh, brought you know, to you by the finest people uh, of Vermont. Every time I look at water, I just think of. <laughs> I just think of flavor. Bring it back. Bring it back. I'm out. Bring it back. I'm out, and I'm out. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this is your moment, Mark. Okay. Here's what happened. J.J. Okay. Abrams has come on to direct. A new Star Wars. Wow, that's big news. Force Awakens 2. <laughs> I don't love the title, but I'll go with it. They need this a new Jedi. Sure. A new somebody to bring the Force back to being what it once sure. was. Yeah, makes okay. sense. Can you sell it to JJ? I think, yeah. oh, I get to be the Jedi? Yeah, you're the Jedi. Brings balance to the Force? To the Force. Yeah, I think I can. I need a monologue to a group of younger, non-Force-holding people. Okay convinced that they that you are the reignition of the force okay. you are the remix to ignition okay. hot and fresh out the kitchen okay mama rolling that body got every man in here wishing that you are the next jedi i didn't get all that but i think i know where you're going yeah okay it's jagged edge and r kelly all right ready and action <clears throat> good evening everyone I'd like to welcome you to my seminar on why i am the last true jedi Please help yourself to cookies and punch in the back. <laughs> Thank you all for gathering here in room 38C of the Mounts Bay Recreation Center here on Naboo. I ask you to do something for me today. Now you can cast your vote for whatever Jedi you damn well please, but the reason why you need to vote for me is simple. <clears throat> My lightsaber is a rainbow. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. I got the red in there, which means I can be a little evil, pissed off. Oh, I got the purple in there. I'm looking at you, Mace Window. I have the green, like Luke Skywalker. I have the blue, like Luke's daddy. And most importantly, I have orange. Now, nobody's ever seen an orange lightsaber, but go I got it. I got it. It's right here in my pocket. I'm not going to show it to you. That's not the Jedi way. The Jedi way is to make you believe that I am the one that's going to bring balance to the Force. Look at what's happened to the Jedi. Hell, now we let women in there. <laughs> We need to bring it back to where it started, to the old republic, when it was just old white men wielding swords inside volcanoes and teaching people what to do, not allowing them to think for themselves. That is the Jedi way. Now, I may seem like a Sith Lord here today, but I assure you that I am not. I am the one true Jedi. My lightsaber is orange, and my name is Sir McNugget. <laughs> and cut Mark Ellis, everybody. Oh, did we, was that the scene? That was. Oh, I'm you sorry. were you were so in character. Yeah. Mark, think I booked it. Take off my beret, because you, sir, you're the real master. Oh. <laughs> well, and oh. you'll hear from a couple of masters after a word from our masterly sponsor. <laughs> the Josh McCuga Show is brought to you by Magic Hat Beer. The most magical beer on the market. Ooh, ooh, ah, 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 
<laughs> it's magic. And it's delicious. <laughs> And welcome back to the premiere episode of The Josh McCuga Show. The home where uh, a, a new show that maybe houses more laughter, more hugs, more more tears. Well, uh, well I mean, if that last performance has anything to do about I'll it. I'll tell you what. There's going to be a lot of confusion. You rock that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Now, The Josh McCuga Show is a little bit different than most every other shows involving a Josh McCuga Show. Oh, please explain. Um, what it is, is we like to get personal, Mark. We like to get real personal with our guests, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to put the cargo shorts on because I don't want to see your balls, but I want to see where the balls of Mark Ellis have led you to today. Where is Mark Ellis personally? Uh, okay, I think How I got How are you feeling? Do you feel okay? Ah, uh, jeez, I don't know. Because sometimes I see you and I'm like, you know what? Mark just needs a hug. You seem a little stressed. Yeah. Is there a, is there a point right now in Mark Ellis' life where you're just a little torn at both ends? There's more stuff going on, Josh. There's yeah. more stuff going on than when you and I were literally free-balling <laughs> on the first episode of Between the Sheets. Yeah. Uh, I now have uh, more responsibilities, more duties professionally. Uh, more things are pulling me in different places, traveling. And, of course, at home, I have a girlfriend. Yes. That's the big, huge... huge you know, billboard new that's your opening headline. Yeah. Is it Mark Ellis dates? Question mark? <laughs> Cause that sells papers. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you, as you know You and me both kind of thing. Both. When we first started Between the Sheets, we were just out there swinging it, aka just ending up blacked out at Taco Bell alone, <laughs> moaning you know into some salsa verde. I don't know what's sadder that you and I have to schedule times uh -huh. to hang out drunk at Taco Bell. Yeah. Or that we want to schedule a time <laughs> to hang out drunk at Taco Bell. Like, we, like, cause here's what will happen is that, like one of us will have a girlfriend going out of town. Yeah. And that's when we call the other person like, dude, I'm free. <laughs> when are we going? And then the other one's like, uh, I actually got plans this week. So <laughs> it's very hard to hang out. Like we, yeah. we actually have to schedule guys nights now. But the nice thing now is that we work in the same office now. Uh, we do, yeah, yeah, during the day. And apparently we, my girlfriend has said, why don't you invite Mark and Danny over for a double date? And I'm like, ugh. See, now I'm getting <laughs> nervous. Yeah, that's what's going to make a sweat, even yes. more than your acting challenge. Yeah. Uh, is because I don't know that I've ever been on a double date, like no? a proper double date. Like, I think I'm always so gun shy that I, like, I would assume that if we went on a double date, we would want our girlfriends to talk, and then you and I would like slink away to like a bowling alley yeah. and just be like, oh, see you tomorrow. It's, like, it's sort of like when your mom calls, you just put her on mute and you do your stuff, and you're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and like, I, I, I think that our girlfriends would get along famously. Fantastic. I think you and I, obviously, we have this. Yep. We have our relationship, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something about a double date, it just seems, like, too adult for oh, me. Yeah, or should we just start, like, a fight club? Uh, but with that, instead of fighting, we just get to hang out and watch the basketball tournament that we both missed this year. Yeah. Dude, I have never missed more NCAA coverage. I mean, at this point, I have more throw pillows than I've had, like, beers with you at the comedy store. <laughs> We've had a lot Nothing of Nothing against the throw pillows. They yeah. seem fantastic. But it takes a lot to take a nap on my bed that I usually can just roll right onto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so nice to put my head on something that says home sweet home. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Between the sheets, we did a lot of things. Uh, Josh McGuigan Show, we're going to try something different. Can I, can I call an audible here real quick? Is hey, Mark, cool? it's okay. your show. So, <laughs> so this is this is episode one. I wanted to make a little presentation to you. I wanted oh, to bring thanks, a little man. gift and something that I like to do because I know that men of a certain age really appreciate certain things sure. from our youth. Now, what I'm about to present to you, I've never given this to another man before, um, but it's something that uh, it's better not be like a used condom. Yeah. I, <laughs> Okay, you know what? Never mind. We don't have a presentation anymore. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be so uptight about it. This is a pack of 1989 score football cards. Oh, This Bo is an Jackson. unopened pack of score NFL. But what you could find in that pack is a Barry Sanders rookie card. You could find a Bo Jackson card in there. I want you to go ahead and open that card. If you get Barry Sanders in there, we should literally cut the cameras after the show and go to Vegas tonight because the luck is we with got us, it. my friend. Very good. My first card is Keith Bishop, center okay. for the deep, the Denver Broncos. He now has a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> Gary James, running back, Detroit Lions. It's not Barry. Oh, it's, God, it's not the. We got a running back, and it wasn't Barry. Oh, oh man. Oh, Punch Ilkin, the voice of the Steelers. Wow. I went to high school with his daughter. Oh, man. 
<laughs> Shane Conlon, Buffalo Bills, pride of Penn State. One of the greatest Penn State linebackers of all time. And white. Tony Dorsett, running back, Denver Broncos. Tony Dorsett's pretty good. That's played pretty for the good. Pitt Panthers, also the Denver uh, Denver Broncos, and the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Predator, <laughs> Reggie White. Oh, that's a Playing big one. Playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. So literally on his card, it says Predator. Predator. Which is not yes. like he likes kids. It's like, see, back in 1989, <laughs> Predator was just a cute alien. Yeah. That was yes, but Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not, so. Yes. Yeah. And finally, that's Anthony Miller, speedrunner, wide receiver. Did I get Bo Jackson? No. No, you didn't. Did I get Barry Sanders? No Vegas. No. But yeah. did I get the love and support of my best bud? Oh, hey. I, I think you did. I think you did. Now let's answer some really personal questions about you. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. We're doing a, a section we're calling the deep end. Ah, right, let's do it. Spin that deep end wheel. Come on, be most memorable section of your life. I like that wheel. Most embarrassing moment of your life, Mark Ellis. I was doing a presentation in ninth grade earth science, and uh, I still remember we were talking about Devil's Tower, which was actually featured in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Sure. And we were talking about some natural landmark or some bullshit, and. I was on stage and my, my, my good buddy, we were doing the presentation together and everybody was giggling in class. And then I see him start to giggle and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? And my fly was down. My fly was down. And you think During a guy who shows his balls on the internet yeah. wouldn't really care about it. But back then I was very, very sensitive about it to the point when the class started singing the Tom Petty song, which was huge at the time, into the great wide open. Oh, Mark. I got into the great wide open. And um, yeah, I have always made sure that my fly is up. Yeah. Mark, this is the portion of the show we're calling Three for the Road. <laughs> Rapid-fire questions. Oh, I thought you know these we, well. We told them at, at Taco Bell. Hey, <laughs> three for the road. <laughs> that's three Crunchwrap Supremes. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. You're holding up nine fingers. <laughs> Just give me the order. <laughs> okay, two, one. Would you rather Taylor Swift or Adele write you a breakup song? Oh, Adele, man. I want to. I want to break hearts. Have you ever won concert tickets from a radio station? Yes, I have. Pay for cable, or are you a cord cutter? Uh, I pay for cable. On a scale from one to ten, how bad is your road rage? Uh, it's a it's a two marred by slight instances of 11. <laughs> <laughs> Most money you've ever spent on a bar tab. I may have been involved in one. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's in the uh, it's in the 300s. Yeah, the boy. Yeah, the boy. 300s, yeah. Did OJ do it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you ask me in 1997, no way. <laughs> I came around in 98. Uh, you ever said, let's go out dancing? Yeah. <laughs> I have. Do you belong to any clubs? Um, yes, I do. Uh, the, the Quiznos punch card <laughs> thing. It's, a, it's an exclusive. You walk in there with eight punch holes and they know, hey, Woo! get out of the way. This guy is for real. You got a pro. You ever bought anything off an infomercial or a QVC? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. Can you play an instrument? Uh, uh, yeah. Drums. Can the I recorder does not count. It's a hot cross <laughs> Your favorite ice cream place in the world? Um, I'm going to go with the Baked Bear in San Diego because they will put ice cream on donuts. Oh. Get a donut sandwich, yeah. We got to go there. Uh, do you have an idea for an invention but don't know how to make it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. You and I have had inventions. We have. We've had invention ideas. I think there was a back shaver we invented that we got to get back going. Oh, the back shaver yeah. idea is genius. Yeah. It involved a rope and pulley system. <laughs> yeah. but And multiple people working it, but it's still yeah. genius. <laughs> Uh, Goodfellas or Godfather? I'm gonna go Goodfellas. Tom Selleck or Burt Reynolds? Ooh, uh, I can't go against Smokey, Burt. Biggest celebrity crush? Uh, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> do you still call shotgun? One minute. I do. <laughs> he does, yeah. he does. Queso dip or guacamole? Queso. <laughs> Comedy or drama? Comedy. Do you have any Canadian friends? <laughs> no, I do. I have some very good Canadian friends. Favorite Olympic sport to watch? Uh, speaking of Canada, curling. Oh, solid. Oh, it's great. Uh, who was the greatest U.S. president? Uh, I'm going to go Lincoln very, very slightly over the other guy. <laughs> Were there other ones? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Soap or body wash? Uh, body wash. Have you ever been blacked out drunk? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite SNL cast member? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. Billy Madison. What's in the box? Uh, her head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who let the dogs out? Uh, who, who, who? <laughs> <laughs> 10 seconds. 
<laughs> Who was the best Batman? Uh, Keaton. Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Garner. Lopez. Sesame Street or Fraggle Rock? Sesame Street. DuckTales or Chippendales Rescue Star Rangers? Hill. Star Trek, Star Wars. Star Wars. Favorite Girl Scout cookie? Star Wars. Oh, oh, my God! Yes. Ha! Ha! Oh, Here we I'm go, out Mark. Of shape. Just one of the best dudes in the world. Not only my good friend, but one of the, just the best guys you'll ever meet, get to hang out with. And I thank you for not only being on the first episode of Between the Sheets, but the first episode of the Josh McCuga Show. And you'll be on many more episodes. And I can't wait to really just like see where our future kind of takes us. Oh, dude, I am so excited for you, for the future of the show, for the fact that everybody now knows that Bob Vila was indeed <laughs> maybe a Nazi. This has just been, it's, dude, it's been a blast. I'm so proud of you. You're, you're, you're my bestie. You're my emergency contact. And uh, I could not be prouder. Love you, man. Subscribe to our channel right here. Watch every episode right here. Support our Patreon campaign right here. And you guys can comment in the YouTube section below. Leave me some awesome comments. You know I'll always respond because I love you guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh McCuga. And tune in every Monday for a brand new episode of The Josh McCuga Show. The greatest late night talk show anywhere.